Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and those who haven't yet decided, this is a Gibson Les Paul, standard, 1979. It is a good guitar. It's a maple neck from those years. It's got the ball loop and that wider 70s headstock. The reason I say this is a good guitar is it generally stays in tune pretty well, sounds very good, and has nice low playing action. The action feels very, very good. I don't know if the lighting's good enough to see that, but uh, the strings ride nice and low. Let's try the heavier side, maybe we can see that better. They ride nice and low, nice low action. When I set up and intonate my guitars, I was using this, or I have a cord too, but this Sabine tuner. It's probably the most sensitive, quickest to track, and in my opinion, most accurate digital tuner I own. Then I got the Con Strobo tuners, that's the ST6, that's the one we're going to use. Um, this says the guitar is intonated correctly from open string to 12th fret. The con thinks we're a little bit sharp on almost every string. So nothing irritates me more, especially on the third string, the G string if you will. That string sounding sharp is the quickest way to make a chord sound dreadful to me. So we're going to tune with the Sabine, check our intonation with the Sabine, record a little bit, and then go back and adjust the guitar with the con as a reference point and see if it sounds any better. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so I've tuned the guitar with the Sabine. And this guitar was intonated with the Sabine probably a number of months ago, but let's see how we do. High E, high E at 12th fret, B, B at 12th fret, G, G at 12th fret. Sure, now it's going to get jumpy on me. Okay, so it, it thinks it's a little sharp today. Oh, now it thinks it's, there we go. I was going to say, it's, this one's a little jumpy. So possibly a smidge sharp. D. D at 12th fret. A. A at 12th fret. E. And E at 12th fret. So what we'll do is we'll record it as is. I'm a little concerned. It seemed to have won a couple of these. I think it was the, the D is the one it was determined might be just a cent sharp on the 12th fret. No, wait, no, is the root note sharp? No. Okay, so... It, oh, sure, now it's going to think it's in tune. So that's the D at the 12th fret, and now it's happy with it. Okay, so apparently it's happy with everything at the 12th fret and whatever. This is why digital tuners have issues. Okay, friends, what we're going to do is we'll play a short passage here. We'll go to audio, hi-fi audio, play a little bit, preferably with some minor chords that are all bars and things like that, and really get an idea of what we have. And then we'll come back and rework the guitar with the con and see if we have improvement.
Okay, so unfortunately I wanted to do this immediately after I finished the sound test with the Sabine, but life challenges you, so it's later this evening. Let's check our tuning with the Sabine. See if we, or not with the Sabine, with the Con, and see where we're at. So we'll start with our high E, which is very slightly flat. And going from ever so slightly flat to ever so slightly sharp is extremely easy. Very, very high sensitivity. Okay, that looks very good. Now let's attempt to check what the 12th fret looks like. I would say that is dead on. That looks very good. Let's try the low E so I don't have to change positions. Okay, the drone of the note seems to be good and in tune. And the 12th fret is sharp. So I will fix that by adjusting the bridge and then we'll tune a little bit more. Okay, so the low E string appears to be adjusted okay. There's our open note. And our 12th fret. That looks very, very good. So now we'll move on to, let's do the B. I am doing these in the playing position if anybody really cares. Everybody likes to nag on you for that. So at present the B is a little bit on the flat side. It's very easy to go over the note, so trying to follow the good procedure of if you go over the note, you stop and go back below the note and come back to it. So I'm not even a half a degree sharp. Not even. Let's look at the twelfth. And the twelfth is very sharp. As you can see, it's walking on, toward the sharp side. And that's with even the lightest finger pressure. If I put very heavy finger pressure, I can really make her run, so... With the lightest finger pressure, it's walking sharp, so we'll correct that, and then we'll move on to the next string. Okay, so now the B string appears good. There's our open. And our 12th fret. That looks good. So, let's move on to G. And for whatever reason, my brain is trying to remind me whether I should be using the... This is the G3 or the G4. I think I should be tuning to the G3, but for some reason my brain can't remember. That is a G4. So that looks good on the stroboscope and on the 12th fret. She's running sharp, so we'll fix that. Okay, I believe we've gotten the G now. Is our open G. And of course, now it's going to run flat just to tick me off and then go ping. It's caught in the nut. We need to put a little bit of graphite in that nut so it doesn't do that anymore.
okay, and then at the twelfth fret, open, twelfth fret. And as you can tell, our open string is just a minuscule amount sharp, as you can see it run, run, you can see it running uh, counterclockwise, and our twelfth harmonic runs counterclockwise almost the exact same amount, so it's so utterly close that me fiddling with it anymore before I put a little graphite in the nut, we're, we're so close it's not even worth messing with it. The detail that these things and this tuners have is just off the charts. Let's try our D. Okay. And our 12th fret. Again, significantly sharp. So we're going to fix that. Okay, results for a D string. Open. 12th fret. Open. 12th fret. That's close. Try, trust me, if I were to get this till it was absolutely not moving at all, we'd be here all year. It's That is so close to not moving, it, it counts. Just take my word for it. Well, if you own one of these, you'll understand. Let's go to the A. And we're getting lots of harmonics today. This A string has a lot of harmonics in it. Looks a little dirty on the scope. Let me roll back the tone knob. Sometimes that helps. Seem to have helped. That looks good. And the 12th fret is in. There we go. So I do not have to mess with that one. And let me recheck the low E. I don't recall that I did that one off the gate. Back to E. Yeah, the low E is right on. The high E, we'll adjust that one more time and get that to perfect pitch again. Good. And the A we just did, so let's just double check our B and our G. Maybe the D. Here's B. That looks good. And let's go over to the D. Or, I'm sorry, the G. First, we'll do the G. Oops. Okay, that one managed to waggle a little on the sharp side. So go back to flat and creep her back up. There we go. Almost. Okay. Okay, and finally the D, because I'm satisfied with the A, because we just did that one last before we looked at the E. Okay, so our guitar should be looking 
beautiful now that we've re-intonated it rather than based on a digital tuner we have re-intonated it based on our antique analog con strobo tuner and we'll do our sound test and see how it sounds So, despite the fact that it does nothing for my crummy technique, which did you think we were better off when we intonate and set our tuning with this thing? Or with our old timer? I don't know. What do you think? Um, I know I thought I heard some improvement in the guitar after I adjusted the intonation according to what this one thinks, especially on the bar minor chords like the C sharp minor and the uh, B minor. I thought those sounded better after we did the the uh, fiddling with it, but uh, anyway, you'll be able to hear the high fidelity clips and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.